Let's get more now on our top story. The United Nations is holding a meeting in New York for international foreign ministers aimed at trying to solve the current crisis in Syria. Now, this comes as Kurdish fighters combating IS in the country say the terrorist group is beginning to withdraw, uh, claiming the era of its destruction has now begun. Well, joining us now live from Washington is Jessica Ashu. She's the deputy director of the Middle East Strategy Task Force at the Rafiq Hariri Center at the Atlantic Council. Jessica, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, first of all, the fact that there are people uh, from uh, most international representations now meeting together in New York is surely in itself a sign of some progress given the chaos that has got us here so far. You know, it is a positive sign of progress, and it is a positive sign of evolution in the diplomatic uh, attempts to resolve this conflict since the last iteration of peace talks in early uh, 2014 in Geneva. Now, in the Geneva format, as you'll recall, um, Iran was not a participant, um, and that was an issue because obviously Iran has troops on the ground and in many cases is commanding uh, Syrian government forces, so to not have them there was a problem. However, I wouldn't get uh, one's hopes up too high about this meeting in New York because uh, just having the parties at the table unfortunately does not mean that they're going to come to a solution. In diplomacy, the only way that you're able to resolve a conflict is by having those parties believe that they are going to get a better deal at the table than they would on the battlefield. And at the moment, I just don't see anything in the cards to significantly pressure the Syrian regime and its backers into making the necessary concessions to resolve this conflict. I, I suppose so, but there is still the evolution of the event itself, isn't there? I mean, uh, Saudi Arabia, of course, making noises recently about different alternative ways of approaching the problem, which alarmed some and reassured others. In the background, we've had countries like Jordan for quite some time now saying, really, we just need to start the diplomacy. The diplomacy is the way to draw people together and start people actually listening to each other. So. For many players, uh, the possibility of nothing happening will strengthen the determination to make the diplomacy have effect. Um, you know, that's right. And there have been positive elements coming out of the Vienna process. And I would say that the most positive elements coming out of this process have to do with aligning the opposition side with each other. Um, you saw, again, at the Geneva talks, the opposition was represented solely by what's called the Syrian Opposition Coalition, um, which is the external political opposition that's largely exiled from Syria. And people were complaining that uh, the delegation was not representative and it wasn't effective because it didn't include fighting groups on the ground. Now, what you have coming out of the Vienna process, and particularly coming out of uh, the meeting that Saudi Arabia organized in Riyadh last week, is a more unified, more comprehensive opposition delegation that not only includes um, the political opposition, but also includes fighters on the ground, fighters on the ground from a number of factions that are key players, and also um, some of the internal tolerated opposition as well. Um, so I would say that that uh, alignment is probably the biggest uh, positive that we've seen come out of this process. Yet, again, all of the kinks are not worked out of this, as Secretary Kerry said last week. Um, there's still some disagreements amongst the opposition uh, about their positions. And furthermore, there's still a, a lack of acceptance on the Russian and the Iranian side about this opposition delegation. They're saying that the fighters are terrorists. And we're hearing this um, over and over again from the Russians trying to delegitimize the opposition and delegitimize the process. So there's still quite a ways to go. Yeah. And, uh, while we're looking at this various different names, Free Syrian Army, the coalition, opposition coalition, all that, it does become clearer to leaders in Europe and in uh, the states that, that there is no uh, coherent opposition at the moment that can be depended on politically. Where does that leave us in terms of uh, Damascus? Uh, Assad's people are still determined uh, that the West does not understand what's going on, that this is Syrian business and people should keep their noses out, uh, and that un until the West faces what Assad's people call the reality on the ground, we're going to make no progress. So there's, there's, a, there's, a lacking, there's a lacking on a sad side as well for recognizing who else is out there and who needs to be listened to. Well, the one point where I would agree with what the Syrian regime says on that point is that, yes, we should leave it to the Syrians. And I would say that the Russians then and the Iranians should probably step aside. 
Um, that would be step one to leaving this to the Syrians. Um, however, you know, when you talk about the reality on the ground, it's actually the Assad regime that doesn't understand the reality on the ground because if you think about the history of this conflict, think about where it started. It didn't start with ISIS. ISIS didn't exist in 2011 um, when this conflict started. It started because the Syrian people were upset at the treatment that they were receiving from their government. And really, that's where this conflict will end. So when we talk about the future of Bashar al-Assad, um, it's not just abstract. As long as he remains in power um, and, and remains uh, the figurehead of the Syrian government, remains free um, to continue to brutalize his people, this conflict won't end. Uh, so that presumably takes us back to the deadlock that's probably happening in New York right now, is that the Russian delegation will be saying, we're not here to talk about Assad, we're here to talk about uh, all the other elements surrounding it, but any question of uh, rearranging uh, President Assad's future is off the table at this stage. That will be the sticking point, presumably, uh, with the different delegations there. That's exactly right. Um, and that comes back to the point that I originally made, where um, it, it's great to have people around the table, but right now we've got opening negotiating positions that are just so far apart that until something changes on the ground to pressure uh, one side or the other into making some concessions, it appears unclear to me how we might uh, get a, a, a resolution, even a, a resolution at the Security Council today, because these gaps are so wide. I mean, br briefly then, Jessica, I mean, is the problem that now every player in this, as far from Washington all the way to Moscow, has a dog in this fight in some shape or form, that no one is no longer a, a neutral arbiter, that everyone has now taken a side of some sort or the other? That's exactly right. There are very few neutral arbiters. I mean, the UN uh, uh, Secretary General is doing his best um, to, to play that role, but obviously the parties on the ground are, are driving this conflict and they have international backers um, and they're invested in the outcome of, of these talks and of this conflict. So again, unless uh, they are afraid that they're going to lose on the battlefield, um, it's unlikely that we'll see a political settlement anytime soon. Hmm. Jessica Shu, thanks very much indeed for joining us tonight here on Sky News.